You know, it occurred to me that it might not be a bad idea to make a video about uh, approach on a hitting machine. This is my little personal picture. Uh, look at the, I hope you can see that, yeah, the green light comes on just before it's going to release a pitch. Obviously, it's not loaded up right now, or I'd be getting it right between the shoulder, shoulder blades, but uh, it's not going to get another blink there. Most There it is, yeah. You see the green light. I'll turn it off now. It's on most pitching machines today. It's giving you about a second, which is about as much time as you would have when a guy's pitching from the set position and then he comes home. When his hands separate, I mean, he's probably going to be a little more than a second, a second and a quarter, a half. That's, those are big league times there. But you're going to have just a bit of time to really get loaded before the pitch is released. And I'm, I'm saying this, and I'm talking about approach here in the context of the machine because I've actually seen some coaches online who say, don't use a pitching machine. Why would you do that? You're not using a pitching machine in a game. You're hitting off a live pitching. So always have, even if it's your granny who's just lobbing balls to you, that's better than trying to hit off a machine. Well, with respect, I have to disagree. Um, I, I think getting the speed, the velocity that a machine gives you, and I always set up really close to this thing, so I'm challenging myself. But of course, I need I need that speed to get ready to hit off a real pitching. Um, the you have to have imagination, don't you? That's the key. That's the thing. You have to be able in your mind to project that green light or whatever kind of light or tip up cue your machine is giving you that it's about to throw. You have to be able to graft that onto the mental image of a pitcher whose hands are just broken and he's he's starting toward the plate, that's when you really load up all the way. And even as his, I think, as his uh, rear foot touches down and now he's coming over the top, that you're, I always say that the hitter is shadowing the pitcher's motions. When his front foot comes down, just an instant after that is the point where your foot should touch down. So you can use a machine, if you can imaginatively kind of project a human being's figure onto it to uh, get ready to hit really good pitching. And I don't know why these online coaches, I, I guess they're talking about kids who have no imagination. I, I was never told when I was a kid how to use a machine. Of course, when I was a kid, we had the old gas-powered machines, they actually had uh, levers, kind of like an arm, and you could see the ball roll into the little net, and then the thing would, and you could imagine, I guess, that that was a pitcher throwing a ball, but uh, I was, as a kid, I was always just <laughs> standing there quaking in the cage, just, I, I didn't know how to, no one told me how to try to process this and think of this as live pitching. And I still, even with more better, more sophisticated uh, machines today, I don't hear coaches telling their players as they practice, okay, this is how this will help you get ready for live pitching. Think of the pitcher as being at this point, at this moment. You gotta do that, coaches, if you, if you want the batting practice to be of any help. Um, now, approach, that's, that's why I'm putting this under the rubric of approach on, in my um, headings on smallballsuccess.com. That's where I'm going to file this video away because you, you're going to enter the box. You're going to have in your mind that you're looking fastball. You can think about, you know, as we do, go the other way with it or try to shoot it up the middle. But especially, even more fundamentally, your approach, your mental approach, is to find something in the activity of that machine that you can correlate to the activity of a real life pitcher. And, you know, I'm sorry if you guys have some trouble imagining that, especially the younger players may have a lot of trouble imagining uh, one thing being another, being a live human being, but work on it. Uh, you've, 
it, it's it's really not going to. I mean, the online coaches are right. Is really not going to do you much good to use this machine if you're not uh, projecting live pitching onto this thing in some meaningful fashion. Now it's also said that well, what's the good of the, the machine's always feeding the ball into the exact same place and it's throwing at the same speed. Uh, if you use a machine like this, it throws wiffle balls. Maybe you can hear my wind chimes in the background there. A lot of times the wind <laughs> will catch these things and I'll be swinging at knuckleballs or something. It, it, it can be a, a real challenge. It's not just one fastball in one place all the time. I also like to keep the, the things that are kind of cracked. I mean, I, I don't, I guess I don't like it because they're the dickens to try to barrel up, but they're, they're a challenge. They're good practice. Uh, what did they say about the Wainer brothers that they used to, uh, after the harvest, they would get old uh, corn cobs in, in Oklahoma, rural Oklahoma, and they would kind of frisbee them to each other and try to hit them, and that's how they became such good breaking ball hitters. Well, you can, you know, that's what your broken wiffle balls are good for. They'll just go all over the place. So you, you can use, I think, you can very productively use a little hitting machine like this. Uh, it's, it's, especially with what I'm doing, trying to, at smallballsuccess.com, we go back and look at the dead ball era so much, and I'm so often using a long wooden bat. I'm not going to take one of my old wooden bats and uh, get a kid to throw live batting practice to me as hard as he can and risk breaking one of these things. Some of them are kind of collector's items. So uh, there are a lot of reasons that you don't want to or you just can't. I mean, I can do this. I can plug these things right off the window and it doesn't hurt anything. There are a lot of, there's so much more that you can do with a, a pitching machine like this. So just uh, remember, program your mind. And, and it's a good lesson, even in a, a game, you know, in a, a live ongoing baseball contest to be able, as you're in the on deck circle, you're, you're, you should be looking at how that pitcher comes set, at how he comes out of his motion and delivers the pitch. Uh, you're not standing in the box. I mean, that's going to take a little bit of imagination. Uh, you might even, if you see a guy way down there warming up in the bullpen, you might be able to do that on him. But it, it develop enough imagination that you can imagine, whether it's a machine or a, a pitcher whom you're not actively facing at the moment, but try to be able to imagine that you're there and he's on the mound and you need to time your load, your emotions. That's the critical thing. You can have, I'm just say this one more thing and then I'll stop this for now, but there's just so many things that pop into my mind when I talk about this subject. When I was a kid, I had a hitch and that was kind of fatal. They told me to get rid of that. And when I did, I wasn't such a good hitter anymore. There's nothing wrong with a hitch. I'm going to do another video about that pretty soon. But the thing is, you have to start the, the dip of the bat at the right time. You can't do it when the ball's in the air right. So why didn't the coaches, all they needed to do was just tell me to make an adjustment to the pitcher's motion. That's what, that's the key. That's one of the most critical keys to hitting is just everything that you do before the ball is actually released. You just have to get your timing in gear. And I think using a machine is a great way to do that.